The comment was made about, about our, our, my company, which is the biggest intermediary effectively in the state, uh, um, not being sued. The reason why we came out uh, so strongly against the SI, even though we had had a conversation where you said, I'm signing it anyway, I, I was in Malta and you spoke to me on the mobile phone, and you said in the door, I was always going to sign it anyway, right, before the debate, right? So, but wait a second. The, 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 the reason why we came out fighting against that SI is because we ran out into the public and made it very clear. <laughs> it would be an enormous toxic political football now if somebody was like EMI was to come along and snap us with an injunction. It would just play so badly given what I've said and what, what we've shown and, what, and, and, the, and the argument that it's made. The only reason we're not getting injuncted, the only reason we're not getting slapped is because it would just become a much bigger deal as a result of the publicity that we've given. It's been a strategy of mine to make this a big deal so that we can run to, the, to literally to the, the mob as the Romans would and, and shout and say, please don't let us get nailed. Okay, one last really quick point. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that's true. I mean, I, I understand the, the rhetoric, rhetoric around it. I understand what you're saying, that you, you shout loud enough, nobody's going to go near you, and you've had an experience of that in the past. That, that I, I think it's closer to reality to say that you know, why would somebody go after boards.ie as an intermediary if, our, if, if I sign up to boards.ie there are strict guidelines around behaviour as to how I, you know, interact with Sean, boards. Okay. Bear with me. Am I sued a country? Bear, bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> what, made, what makes you think they won't come after a small five-person company? So, but, but, but what you have to have regard to the fact I take the point, but you have to have regard to I'm glad, I'm glad. Hold on a second. That as, as an intermediary, you have rights by virtue of the e-commerce directive. Isn't that disgraceful that our answer to our own bad laws to say it's okay, Europe will save you? That's not good enough. That, no, no, you're, no, you're really getting the time. No, but that is because because what you need to do. Because what you need to do is run to Europe, they'll save you from our bad to, law. We have to, no, we have subscribed to that. and. The e-commerce directive is something that we subscribe to on a voluntary basis by virtue of our membership. <laughs> Believe me, I know the e-commerce directive. We have a nail on the wall. Every day, I love you. you know, <laughs> it's our protection. I know it's true. We are from the sublime note to the ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous. You're it's saying that. that, that yeah. well, wait, you said that we should go. To, we're covered by Savannah and European law. And that protects us from Irish sure, law. No, from, mean, from the from the the, the of Irish law. As an intermediary, you have. Protection in European law because we don't have it in Irish. If you have it, don't make it. Don't make me put the slide back up. You can sue an intermediary. I think you should have a bit of respect now as well. I think if you're an internet an intermediary, right? There is a body of law. It's the e-commerce directive. If you go to the e-commerce directive, it gives rights to. Correct. Your entity to be able to conduct. What does the EU stand in? Uh, in EC, uh, European Connected. I mean, it's the EC uh, e-commerce directive. Right? It's European EU e-commerce directive. Right? It's, it's, it's European law, and it protects us from, from Irish law. Right? From, no, from no, no, it doesn't protect you. It gives you the line of defence. Yes, the line of defence, which is actually worse because we have to activate that in court. That's the big problem. Right? And yeah. then there are members who have actually been sued at this stage. Two of them. Uh, to, uh, to, to actually do something, and that's, they're actually acting as a buffer. So it's even worse because it's even more blank because we can get injunctions against our members for things which aren't even at <coughs> this stage as well, uh, which is already happening. So, uh, and that is exactly what ACT is bringing in, even more powerfully, trying to write that into a code that an ISP or other intermediary can actually have an action taken against it. For something that might be happening. This, this SI, this whole argument that's, that's happening, sorry, to uh, yeah. support your point, this whole SI, this argument that's happening is a raindrop in the storm that is coming. Right? So understand that this is the smallest part of the beginning of the control of the internet and your ability to access it unfettered. Uh, it's not nonsense. And in five years' time, I will sit here and tell you that this was not nonsense. That's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to wind down. Do you want to make the last point, Simon? I should say, um, I set up a, a, a suggestion of um, my web developer, Susan Dent, the, uh, the petition site. And, um, and I asked people to sign the petition because I thought this was a bad law. 
Now, the law is passed now, there will be more bad laws in the future if we don't get our voices heard sooner. Now, Digital Rights Ireland, whom I represent, though not in this area, uh, 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 wrote to the, uh, the Minister's predecessor in 2010 and asked for a meeting uh, on this SI when it was in its gestation period. Uh, we never got an answer back. Other people have meetings. Uh, I can tell you that the, um, that the, 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 the effort of uh, bringing this up into the public domain was not inconsiderable, and Thomas re referred to that as well. This is a technical issue. But I can tell you that the reason that people are worked up about it, I put my hand up on that, worked up about it is, this is not a technical matter. This is a matter relating to our society. And it's local and it's global. And unless the populace, the people in the country, are engaged with this issue, unless we realize what it is that those lobbyists are paid to speak for and provide a counterweight in our own voices, we will not like what comes out of the other end of those sausage machines. And the minister has made it clear in his acts and his deeds that we cannot rely on him to protect our interests without our voices being heard. So I would ask you, please stay engaged, stay listening to what's happening, and stay talking. Thank you. Say thanks genuinely to everybody that has shown up here. Uh, I want to say thanks to the guys here for the robust debate. Okay. Uh, what we have to do now is maybe continue the engagement. Absolutely, to continue the engagement to keep the conversation open with the ISPAI, with people like those, with people like Simon as well, uh, and to see where we can go on this one. Uh, in relation to the consultation. You know, we are going to listen on the consultation. If we didn't want to listen, we would have just instigated, you know, legislation and be done with it, if you will. You know, and what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do. What, what, well, if you, if you go back and look at ACTA, an actor cannot be outside of what is already in what they call the acquis key communitaire. Okay, I've said that already. So I've said that already. Okay. So, but look, all I want to say is that. Uh, People have to ask themselves what kind of internet they want. Do they believe in copyright? If they, you know, what type of legislation should be framed around where we need to go as a country? And look, I'm looking at the tweets here, and I can understand that people are, you know, you know, have it have it in for the government on this one. But really, genuinely, what we are trying to do uh, is to try and, you know, hear your voices on this one and see where we can go from there, and maybe move into a more positive space and a more consensus-driven space about you know, how we shape legislation into the future. I actually think also, if I may say this, that I think people need to, uh, sometimes within the online community, people are, you know, they're, they're very big egos when they're you know, behind their own screens in their own houses. Uh, and, and I think people need to, I think people need to part the egos, including ourselves in government, and to engage, okay? And I say that genuinely. Uh, because what I found is that sometimes the most vitriolic of comments that are made uh, through Twitter, when you actually, you know, to people like myself, when you end up meeting the people, you find that they're thoroughly nice people. And, you, you know, that there's a whole negativity around the debate that doesn't need to be there. It doesn't need to be personal, is what I'm saying, in effect. So I, I, I'm, I'm thick-skinned. I'm a government minister. That's my job. But what I really want to do is I want to ensure that we can try and move into a space where we're, we're talking to each other at least. Okay, guys, we're going to have to wind it up. Um, Probably about 20 minutes over time, but I, I think everybody has been given a chance to say what they want to say, and I, I, I would hope we probably have something like this again. I think it's been very valuable, so thanks again, guys.